everybody, my name is Santi and today we're taking a look at King of New York, a game in which you're trying to kill all the other monsters in New York City or being the first monster to achieve 20 points. Let's take a look at it so you can get an overall picture. Well, this is what King of New York looks like. In this game, you're trying to be the first player, monster, or character to receive 20 points or to be the only monster left in New York City. How are you going to do that? Well, the game works based on a basic mechanic that is dice rolling. What are you going to do with these dice? You can roll them once, you can choose to re-roll them, and you can even re-roll them twice if you want. Let's say instead of this, I have rolled this, this, and this. So I'm sheriff and I'm in Brooklyn district, okay? So, next thing I do after I've rolled, re-rolled and re-rolled for even a third time if I want is resolving my dice. Let's say that the first thing I do is I receive with this dice one energy because this dice give me one energy for each lightning they show. Okay, if I had three lightning dice, I would receive three energies, but as I only rolled one, I receive one. Next thing that happens is that I rolled this dice with a heart in it, and that allows me to recover one health point. But as I'm already in 10 health points, I can receive 11 unless I have a special card that allows me so. Next thing I do is with this punch dice, I deal one damage to the character that is in Manhattan District, that is the main district in New York, in King of New York. So the character here, which is Rob, will receive one damage. Next thing that happens is that with this uh, dice, I destroy a value one building. So I will flip this over. This gives me one point because there's a star there and I flip it over. So I earn one point. And there we go. If I had rolled three buildings, I could destroy this value three factory and that would have given me three energies, okay? Next thing that happens is with this skull. This skull makes the army units in my district attack me. So I will receive one damage for each army unit that is in my district. As there is only one, I will receive one damage. If there were two or three, then I would have received two or three damages. But what happens if instead of one skull, I would have rolled two skulls? Well, then, would, then what would have happened would, would be that the, all the monsters in my district would have received damage. So let's say Kong here was also in Brooklyn district. Then not only me, but also Kong would have received one damage. Okay. But there's another option. Another option is that I have rolled three skulls. What would have happened then? Well, all the monsters in New York City, no matter in which district they are, would have receiven, received uh, uh, damage from each army unit in their district. So let's say in Manhattan there were three u army units, then Rob would have received three damages. Draconis, zero, and Kong and Sheriff, one damage. And that's it. And then we have the stars here. The stars give you one point for each star you roll. Not so easy because you have to roll three stars for that. Once you roll three dice with a star in the same turn and you resolve them, you receive this Oscar here. This allows you to receive immediately one point and after that turn you will receive one point for each star you roll. So let's say in this turn I get this and next turn I roll my dice and I get two stars. If I still have it, I will receive two points. But during other turns of other players, they can also roll three stars and then they will get this trophy. That's basically how your, your dice rolling works. You can resolve your dice in any order you want. There's no, uh, there's no marked order for the dice. And then what you can do is you can buy this special cards with energy. So let's say I had six energies. So now I can choose to buy one of or two or three of these cards. 
as I have six energies, let's say I'm interested in this one that costs four energies, so I pay four energies in order to get that card, and a new card is drawn. Another thing I can do with my energies is spending two energies in order to discard these three cards and draw three new ones. Da -da 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 -da. Okay? As you can see, there are two types of cards. We have permanent cards and we have instant cards. Permanent cards, once you've, bought, once you've bought them, you put them here and the effect is permanent for the rest of the game. But if you buy an instant card, then you will use this ability immediately and then you will discard that card. So, at the end of your turn, you will check if you have earned 20 points or if you're the only character left in New York City. If one of those things happen, then you're the winner of the game. If that doesn't happen, then you give the dice to the player at your left and the game continues until one of the players has 20 points or there's only one monster left in New York City. So let's go and take a look at my top three about King of New York. Well, the third thing I like the most about King of New York is that it has an immersive theme. It might seem at first that it is not a really new or, or brilliant theme, it's just like a Godzilla theme in which monsters are trying to kill each other in the middle of a city, but it is really immersive because you have this way of playing in which you can get the 20 fame points in order to win, but everyone gets involved in this, um, in this try to kill him, try to kill that monster, or you're like, hmm, you know, he's only, he only has three health points, right? So you're gonna kill him. And then you're, you're enjoying that other monsters kill each other. So that's a thing I like a lot, and that, that is that you're, you're really immersed in that theme, and that's something I like a lot about King of New York. The second thing I like the most about King of New York are these silly monsters we have here. You can't see this fish. That This is hilarious for me. Then you have this uh, dragon with a machine gun. Then you have this gorilla with the electronic punches. You have this crazy dinosaur called Sheriff that is trying to kill everyone. <laughs> I don't know, I, I just find them fun. And I think that they are really funny. I think they're they're really well designed. The art is cool. It's cartoony in order to be a little bit friendly. Okay, you're trying to kill each other, but just in a fun way. So that's something I like. I like a lot of the, the silly monsters that come in the game. But the thing I like the most about this game is that you can play it two ways. You can play it the smart way, in which you're trying to make a tactic in order to, to get those 20 fame points as early as you can, or then you can play the hard way and you're just trying to kill everyone, punches, 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 and recovering health points. I like that you can combine the two ways of playing or you can go hard with one or hard with the other one. I like that. I like that it's a game that doesn't have only one one way to go or or there's not it's not clearly better to go in the hard way or clearly better to go in the in the smart way and trying to do that tactic to get the 20 fame points. I like that both ways are okay and you can combine them and that's something I like a lot about King of New York. In fact, it's the thing I like the most about King of New York. So let's go to my ratings. Okay, so for the theme I'm gonna give King of New York an 8. I'm gonna give it an 8 because this theme is so immersive in the game. You're just getting involved and more involved in this dynamic of killing monsters and destroying the city and you just feel like a monster in the city wanting to destroy everything and killing everyone. So that's a really good thing about the game. I'm also giving it an 8 because I think that King of New York, well Yellow, first with King of Tokyo and then with King of New York, kind of has this this monopoly of, of Godzilla theme, of monsters trying to kill each other. And not because they were the, the one of the first ones to do that, but because they really did a good product about it. And the theme of King of Tokyo and King of New York, which are really similar, just is amazing. So that's the reason I'm going to give it an 8 for the theme. For the mechanics, I'm going to give King of New York a 7. I'm going to give it a 7 because I like that it has this dice rolling mechanic, but I like a lot more that you have these cards and this energy and this destroying the buildings that makes the game smarter than King of Tokyo and, and gives the game a, a bit of a maybe a more strategic uh, point to the game. However, the game is really simple. 
you have the dice rolling, which is a basic mechanic in the game, and it's just good. There's nothing really new in this game, so that's the reason I'm gonna give it a 7. It's good, but nothing really mind-blowing. So that's the reason I'm giving it a 7. Let's go and take a look at the art and the components. Okay, so my rating for the art and the components of King Knave New York is going to be an 8. First we have this box here that is okay because it's a square box but it's a little bit smaller than your typical square boxes for board games. The cardboard is okay. Then we have the rule book which is good, it's well written and it's only two pages, double sided. The problem for me is that it's square, I prefer rectangular uh, rule books but it's okay, it's just fine. The insert is quite good. You can put everything here and it's and it stays in where there is supposed to stay. So that's good. It's a good box, a nice box. And it's smaller than your typical square board game box. So that's okay for me. That's good. The box is okay. Next thing we have is the board, which I have to say I really like the size and the form of the board. Instead of being the typical uh, two per two squares, it's just two squares, it's rectangular. I like the design, I like it's like, okay, it's not very, very complicated art design, but it's cool, it has what, it, all everything it needs for this game, which is basically almost nothing, <laughs> but it's okay, it's, it's kind of cool, I like how the buildings, the Statue of Liberty are drawn, that's, that's cool for me, that's okay, the board is okay, it has a good, thick cardboard, it's okay, good. Next thing we have are the monsters, which are I find really cool because they're like this silly, uh, ridiculous monsters. We have this mantis with this, um, I don't know how you call that in English, a saw, an electric saw maybe. Then we have this captain fish, which is, which is a fish like in a kind of in a swimming uh, suit. Well, not swimming suit, but well, however you call that in English. Uh, that has this boat and the, and a chain. It's kind of cool. Then we have the sheriff here. It is just a crazy dinosaur. We have this electronic uh, gorilla. We have this crazy aggressive and destroyer dragon with a machine gun. We have this robot here. I think these are kind of cool. They're well designed. They 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 fit in this game. They're like this silly theme of monsters destroying each one. You could have done it in a really realistic and, and brutal way or you could have done it in this silly way and I think that is funnier and, and it's more friendly this way. The th the cardboard is really thick so it's good. It's not it's not re really really taking a lot of damage. I've played this a lot and as you can see they still look kind of new. So these are good components for the monsters. The other thing we have are these energy cubes which are plastic, are little small green plastic cubes. These are okay, they're good. They're good for what they are for. Then we have the dice, which are black uh, chunky dice, plastic dice. They are okay, they're good. They're easy to, to use and roll. These are good. Then we have the building tiles, which are excellent. I, I really enjoy the, the art design for these ones. And we have this building here, we have this hospital. And the, the cardboard for this tile is, is thick. It's really well, well, really well produced, these tiles. And there are a lot of them, so that's something I like. Then we have each uh, characters. Uh, I don't know how to call it, it's not because it's not a, yeah, you could say board, in which you count the, the health points and the points of each character. And they have this image of the of the character. Each uh, board is different, so that's something I I like and I enjoy. There is one for each character. This okay. This is a good component and really good quality for that component. Then we have the cards that are meh, a little meh, because it's true that you don't use them that much. So maybe it would have been a a big cost making them better for something that you're not really gonna use. But but even though the design is cool and it's still in this cartoony, silly, uh, monsterish uh, art, they seem a little bit. They're okay for the thickness, but I really don't like 
them being this flat and this really smooth um, touch they have. It, it seems a little bit too fragile for me, but well, you don't use them at, that much, so I guess it's just okay. Another problem problem we have here is this uh, tiles, or I don't know how to call them. Yeah, tiles that we only use for some special uh, superpower cards. But I get that the art is is cool and it's the same as a as a as a card that you wanted to use it from. But uh, I think I would have preferred something a little bit more more clear, more easy to distinguish. While, while you're playing and they're on the board. But well, that is my major problem with this game. We also have the stands for the for the characters which are really good because they don't really damage the um, the character cardboard, you see. They're this kind of cardboard of stands and they're really really big so there's no problem with the with the balance of the of the of the character and the monster so they are not falling each time you move them so that's basically how the components are they're really quite good you know yellow production so that's the reason I'm gonna give it an 8 so let's go to my final rating well my final rating for King of New York is going to be a 7 it's going to be a 7 because this game is a really entertaining and a really funny game to play. There's always a lot of laughs when I play this game. It's a good game, simple game, easy to play, easy to teach. You might want to check it out if you're if you're looking for a, a light game. Kind of cool. So I'm gonna give King of New York a seal of approval. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.